Welcome to Piano Side Chat. I'm Reverend Stephanie Allsweet at St. Paul Benson. We are a reconciling United Methodist congregation in one of Omaha's historic neighborhoods. We are so happy to see you this second Sunday in January as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Welcome to Piano Side. Our Psalter today is a meditation on the splendor of God's voice as it speaks through creation and elicits the response of God's people gathered for worship. The final verses offer an assurance that God sits enthroned as King forever and will strengthen and bless the congregation of the faithful, emphasizing that the one who strengthens and blesses is none other than the one whose power is seen in creation. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? We lift up today our prayers um, of individuals, of this congregation, of the community around us, giving thanks that God hears our prayers, the collective, uh, the individual, the ones that are spoken, and the ones that are known only in our hearts, as well as the prayers that we will reflect later we had wished we had known to say. Oh God, today we lift up all who are struggling, whether that be with grief or decisions, perhaps anxiety, fear of the unknown, or maybe folks who are just weary. We lift them up to you for your care, for comfort, for rest, for wisdom. And we pray that we might find comfort with one another in scriptures and in prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. As I record this, we hear more and more and more about changes in the COVID virus. We give thanks today for researchers, for caregivers, both professional and volunteer. We give thanks for days of health and we pray for those who are in the midst of other kinds of unknowns, health unknowns waiting to hear whether a cough is just a cough or something else. We pray that we might stay healthy, make wise decisions, be kind to one another, and that we as a nation and a global community might navigate together a path towards global health with equity and that works for all people. God of mercy, hear our prayer. In these winter days, uh, we in the Midwest hear the wind and does it ever howl. And in the midst, we have breaks with sunshine. Sometimes the sun feels warm, other times it appears to be an optical illusion of sorts. We give thanks for all seasons. We give thanks for your presence in the midst. 
We give thanks for shelter, for warmth, and pray for those who are missing shelter and warmth, for those who live and work outdoors, and we pray that we might find ways to share our resources with one another. God of mercy, hear our prayer. In this month where we mark the birth of Martin Luther King Jr., we pray for all of those who seek justice, for all of the accidental justice seekers. We pray that we might learn bit by bit, leap by leap, how to become advocates for peace for one another. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we lift up the global community, siblings who live far away and yet to whom we are close. We pray again for our nation's leaders, for the leaders of other nations, that we might learn to understand one another, to work together for peace and justice. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this earth on which we live, that we might always remember to give thanks for the food we eat, for the air we breathe, and that we might be good stewards of the resources we've been given. God of mercy, hear our prayer. And for the saints, those who've gone before us, whose lives still are a witness to your faithfulness to us, we give thanks and pray that in this present moment, we might look to the future with hope. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We wrap these prayers together, O oh God, with thanksgiving for the path of discipleship, for your invitation to us to accept forgiveness and grace, to move forward in hope, sharing the good news that we have found, never holding it back from others. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our lectionary today is from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke, reading from the third chapter and beginning with the 15th verse. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Uh, here we are on um, the second Sunday in January. In the church year, this is the Sunday that we call the baptism of our Lord. Um, so it's the day that we baptize Jesus. You'll notice that I am sitting in front of our beautiful uh, Christmas or Chrismon tree here at St. Paul. Um, you know that I have great interest in when people set up and take down trees. Um, my silver aluminum tree at home probably will be down by the time we baptize Jesus. Um, but it just, this tree is just too good to not leave up a little bit longer, don't you think? And in celebration of the tree's presence, I thought I would share with you 
can you see my wonderful um, fuzzy good size Christmas tree earrings I, I purchased these at a local plant shop of all places and I thought that piano side regulars Linda and Dee especially might appreciate these I know I do and I was horrified this morning when I realized I had not yet worn them this season and I thought you know Piano side is the perfect place to continue celebrating. Um, that said, let's talk about baptism. Um, I'm coming to you from a United Methodist Church, which has a very, I'd say, white Midwestern baptism situation going on in the sanctuary. Uh, we have a, a wood baptism font. It's, it's beautiful. And in our case, we have several different glass basins that we set on the top of it. They are lit from the bottom by a spotlight, um, so they glow a little bit on Sundays. And the colors um, go with the seasons of the church year. So our, our baptism font is a little bit more glowy than some, but it's still fairly obviously the kind of baptism font that one might calmly um, sprinkle water from. Um, if you were using a measuring cup, I would say at the most we'd probably have four cups of water um, in that baptism font. And that's, that's the generally the kind of baptism font I've been familiar with in my 27 years of ministry. My home church in Lincoln was very dramatic at, when I was a child and they got a big baptism font. It might be this big. It was very exciting uh, when that happened. And I'll tell you what was even more exciting. Um, it was the year, I believe it was on Easter, I believe. We were having this gigantic music presentation and Kathy Rice, who at the time was not yet a pastor, but is now a retired pastor who hangs out here at St. Paul, Kathy was conducting and she was conducting the choir, the bell choir, and I believe some kind of a string ensemble, which I think I was part of, which is why I had a good view. And she's conducting away and somehow her baton gets caught on the bottom of her music stand at just the right angle, and the baton goes whoop, 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 and lands right in that baptism font, which was large enough that it could just plop right in there. It was an amazing Easter. Well, I've got baptism fonts on my mind because of this scripture. Now let's read it. Um, I'm gonna reread a little bit from the end first. Now, when all the people, all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove, not like a conductor's baton. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Wow. I mean, what a moment. Here they are. They're not indoors at a font. They are outdoors in the river. All the people have been baptized, so people are soaking wet. And this dove comes, and there is a voice from heaven. That's a memorable event. Even more memorable than the time the pastor wore her Christmas tree earrings for piano side. Far more memorable even than the time that the conductor's baton splashed into the baptism font on Easter. It's a memorable event. Heaven's opening, dove descending, God speaking. I always enjoy baptizing people in my life 
it's usually uh, a child. Sometimes it's um, a child who's old enough to be what I call a runner. So the challenge is kind of maintaining proximity to the two-year-old uh, without having to chase them down. It's kind of a bad optic to have to chase someone down for their baptism. Um, but recently, I've had a new experience of baptism. The East Africans who are part of our congregation have a, a tradition of baptism by immersion. That's something with which I am utterly unfamiliar and have had no reason really to think much about because of the kinds of churches I have served. I'm not gonna be immersing anybody in the kind of font that has been placed in the churches where I've served. Well, last Easter, uh, the group said, well, we'd like to have baptisms and you know it's by immersion. And so we figured out how to place an inflatable hot tub. The water was not running, it wasn't hot tubbing, it was more of a vessel outside in the courtyard of the church. It was, I thought it was a beautiful setting. People gathered round and it was really quite an experience baptizing people in, in water, not just kind of petting people's head with a wet hand. You see, people float. <laughs> And so when you're baptizing somebody in water, you have to kind of push them in there. So it's a, a very physical experience, as is the experience of getting wet yourself. So there's like a wet robe kind of sticking to your legs or moving around. It's a, a very physical experience that I had not thought through before. Well, this fall, our parishioners said to me, we have more people ready to be baptized. It's like, okay, well, we still have that same hot tub. Maybe this time we will set it up indoors because I think December, the month they were looking to baptize people, might be kind of cold. It just seemed practical to me to have it inside. Well, a couple days later, a text arrived and it said, we think we need more water. We think we need more water. I found the, the leaders of that worship and service. I said, can you tell me what you mean by needing more water? Be because from my experience, an entire hot tub of water seemed like quite a bit compared to the amount of water to which I was accustomed. Well, they remembered that our neighbors at Benson Baptist on the other side of Benson on Maple Street had a baptistry. I said, oh, are you, are you sure we need to do that? Well, they thought maybe we did. Maybe we needed more water. So I found myself the day after Christmas Day with the keys to Benson Baptist standing in the baptistry by the way, they're wonderful neighbors. Baptizing people in more water. More water. So here's what happened. We came through, it's fairly well organized. You come down a hallway and the men and the women come through the bathrooms. And then there's a door, kind of like if you were at the swimming pool, you walk out the other side of the bathroom and you are ready to go down the steps to the baptistry. The congregation had been out in the pews when we left them to go to the baptistry. I assumed they would stay in the pews. But when I came down the steps to the water, I looked up and perhaps 30 people were crowded into that space looking into the baptistry. They were so excited to see their friends, their children, their relatives being baptized. Um, imagine a window, perhaps in your living room, full of everyone you know, smiling and waiting, only instead of looking into your 
living room with your sofa furniture. They're looking in to a pool of water. It's something I could never have imagined, and I'm guessing I've described quite poorly. As we baptized people one by one, an eighth grader, two high schoolers, and a 20-year-old, different people moved to the front, crowding in to be able to take photos and to cheer for their friends and family. And I could hear the people in the sanctuary rippling with excitement about this moment in their friend's life. When we were done with the baptism, put on dry clothes, I realized that these young adults had brought different clothing to put on after their baptism. They were wearing what I would describe as what teenagers would wear to a homecoming. They were wearing their best. And as they went back into the sanctuary and were greeted by their families, loud cheering greeted all four of them. They did need more water. And the congregation that surrounded them had such a physical response to them standing and cheering, embracing them. All of this while navigating, wearing masks in the midst of a pandemic. Small children with huge eyes trying to figure out what they were seeing. Grandparents giving them flowers. I thought to myself, isn't it amazing what we learn from different cultures? And isn't it significant what that phrase, more water, means? Now, that doesn't mean that we need to dump more water over infants in the sanctuary at St. Paul Benson. The children that we quietly baptize with sweet smiles and sincerity in our sanctuary are just as blessed as these young adults in the baptistry at Benson Baptist. But what I found myself reflecting on is that in the midst of all these different permutations of what baptism looks like, the common thread is the joy we find in that moment of clarity of being called and claimed as God's own children. And I found myself yearning and hoping and wishing that in this new year, of all new years in this new year of 2022, that we might invite ourselves to live a life with more water, that we might yearn every day to remember God's claim on our lives. So even if 50 people aren't leaning into our living room window. Please don't come do that. I can't handle that right now, probably ever. But that we might live with that kind of excitement for one another. You've been called by God. You've been called by God. You've been called by God. You've been blessed by God. You've been blessed by God. You've been blessed by God. More water means to me more energy used in blessing one another, reminding one another, cheering for one another, not the stuff of life, but the isness of life, which is God's claim that we belong to God first, that God reaches us how we are and where we are, and names us as God's very own every day. Every day is a day with more water. I give thanks for that particular experience of more water and that every day in its own way is a day with more water. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us for Piano Side Chat. You know, we're coming up on our 100th episode. We're not quite sure how we'll celebrate. You know, I do not enjoy loose glitter, so I don't think that's an option. But be on the lookout for something extra special that will happen. In the meantime, I do hope you stay warm. I do hope you remember that every day is a more water day and you can stay in touch with us through our social media platforms or give us a holler on the telephone or write us a note. We're always glad to hear from you. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next week.